Okay, so now we're back to our mouse here and we want to trigger off an event for the mouse that will happen if he gets touched by the cat at any stage during the game. So I'm going to apply the control here because the trigger for this event is the game start event. And uh, we want, when the game is started, again we're going to use the forever loop. And we're going to use an if event here. So this if statement is very common in computer programming languages. It's in every computer programming language. So if he senses something happening. So I'm going to jump to the sensing block here. And you'll notice this block here has a touching block. And at the moment, that forever if statement is waiting for something to be snapped in here, okay? It's waiting for you to snap a little statement in. And the statement I'm going to say is, I'm programming the mouse at the moment, and you say, if at any stage during the game he's touching the cat, I want a, a few things to happen, a few nasty things. So I'm going to go to the looks here and make something nasty happen. So I'm going to snap in a change effect here. I'm going to change his uh, fisheye effect by 100. I'm going to say ouch for a second, as it really hurts. And also on top of that, yeah, what I'd like to happen is, he, in computer games, typically you get hurt for a second and then you're okay. It's, okay. it's not like real nice. You don't have to go to the hospital and get bandaged up and it takes weeks to get better. So the command that helps me get better here is if I clear the graphic effect, okay? So I put on the graphic effect, I say ouch for a second, and then I clear the graphic effect. So let's, um, yeah, I'll just dra drag my cat over here. Let's play the game and see, I'll go full screen here. Let's see if that works. There we go. And you can see it applies for a second and it goes back to normal. And even better, I'll see if I can put a sound effect in as well. I'll record with me. Okay, hello. So I'll put in my, I'll just call this recording, I'll say, Ow, ouch sound, okay? <coughs> and again, where do I put that? I put it, in, snap it into this code here. So under sound, I'll play the ouch sound as well there, why not? And what's, what's a good idea here as well, guys, is if you right click, and I have a nice little a bit going on here, don't I? So if I hold down control and click for right click, if I add a comment here, it's a good idea. So I'm just going to put a comment in here that explains what's happening. I'm going to say that uh, this script uh, detects if the mouse touches the cat and makes nasty things happen if he does. Okay, so I'll just snap that comment on there, it's good to have. Another thing you can do, see my code's looking a bit messy now. If you, if you use the right click or control click and use the clean up button, it cleans up all that mess in your code. It makes it nice and neat and puts it down on the line. Okay, so if you, yeah, if you just go onto the gray area here in the, the palette, if you apply a right click and click on clean up, it'll just make your code look nice and neat. Okay, so like any games, we usually use numbers a lot to track things, okay? And uh, the system of using numbers here is it's called variables. In, the, in a computer language, we call it variables. And what, when something is variable, what does that mean? The weather is variable. Yeah, changes. changes, okay? So your lives is a holder, if you like, for a figure. And that figure changes up and down, doesn't it? Or down yeah. usually when, you, when your game is played, right? So all it is is a bucket or a container. So I'm going to make the variable here by first, uh, I'll select my mouse, I'll click on the variables area here and I'll click make a variable and the, the variable name will be lives and I'll click OK. You can see when I create that variable that it displays automatically on the screen in the top left hand corner and I'll leave it like that. If I ever want it to disappear I can click there and I can remove it from the stage or make it appear on the stage again. Some variables you like to have working in the background and sometimes you want the variables displaying. I think it's a good idea for this particular game that the number of lives is displaying the whole time to motivate the player, okay? So um, you can see with the variable, I can set or I can change the, the number of lives that are there or I can show the, show the number of lives, uh, speak, speak it out in a speech bubble or anything like that. So what do we want to do with the lives at the beginning of the game? Five. Yeah, you want to set them to five. So I have, for this mouse, I have an event at the beginning of the game here. I want to snap it in before the loop starts. I want to set the lives to five. 
What would happen if I put it into the loop? It would always keep going. Yeah, it would keep resetting to five, so you keep getting five lives. So I only want that to happen once, so I keep it out of that forever loop, so I snap it in and out of it, and I'll set my lives to five at the start of the game. And to test that, I'll just click the green arrow. I'll just go into presentation mode for you to see it. And when I click the green arrow, I'm up to five lives. Okay. Now, at the moment, I haven't programmed in the intelligence yet. When he touches the cat, each time he does, he should lose a life. So I'll just return here, and we'll go in and see where we should snap that into the code. I'm going to change the lives here. I'm going to snap it in. When all this nasty stuff happens, when he touches off the cat, we're going to change the lives. If he changes by one, he's going to go up. So i got to use the minus figures again there and change by minus one. And again, it's a good idea to keep testing. So I'll stop my script, I'll go into presentation mode, and I'll run a test. I've started with five lives. And now, four, three, two. Okay, when is the game supposed to end? Okay. Now, unfortunately, the computer here does exactly what I say. And apart from the computer, I now have minus whatever lives, okay? So, so that's not good, is it? Okay. So we're, we're going to need to programming, uh, we're going to need to, okay, let's stop that game. <laughs> Enough of that. So I'm going to need to program in something that uh, stops the game. Now, we're going to use this thing called a broadcast. A broadcast is a very handy tool in the control area here that if I want something to, to affect every element of the game, the mouse, this game has three elements, the mouse, the cat, and the stage. I can broadcast out from the mouse when he gets to zero lives out to the other elements of the game, when the game's over, what happens to the background when the game's over? It switches. What happens to the cat and the mouse when the game is over? Yeah, we'll make them disappear, okay? So I'm going to, firstly, I'm going to program a concurrent set of events. So I'm going to, for the mouse, I'm going to have another win green arrow clicked. So it means there's a thread of events. One thread is he's looking out as he's touching the cat. The other thread of event is going to be a check at the same time running constantly using a forever if loop again. I'm going to snap onto here. It's always going to be checking during the game. Is my lives equal to zero? Okay. So how do you check if the lives are equal to zero? You go to the operator area here and you pull out an equals operator, right? So when I snap that equals operator here in, I want to know is the lives equal to zero? Where am I going to pull out my lives? and snap it in there. Variables. For my variables, you can see my lives are here, I'll snap it in there. So if at any stage the number of lives is equal to zero, and I'll just type the number zero in here, at any stage it's equal to zero, I'm gonna broadcast, broadcast this message to everybody to say game over, okay? So under the control area again, I'm gonna find the broadcast here, and I'll send out that message, and it's a new broadcast message called game over. Oh, I can spell. Okay, so I'll just recap on that. I've got a new, what's called a concurrent thread of processing. So as we're checking for the cats and the lives, we're also checking at the same time as my lives triggered to the zero state. And if it does, I'm going to broadcast this message. And when I receive that broadcast, stuff has to happen, okay? So you can see there's a command here. When I receive the broadcast for the mouse itself, I'm going to go to looks and I'm going to hide him. Is there a hide button? Thank God there is. So there it is. I have messy code, so I'll just right click here and I'll clean that up, okay? So my code is nice and in a line again. Now, if the cat received the broadcasts, so again under the control area, so when he receives, or when I receive, and from the cat's point of view, actually, do you know what I'll do? I'll just delete that. I'm going to go back to the mouse. The same thing happens to the cat, doesn't it? So if I move down to the broadcast command here, when I receive uh, game over hide, if I right click and I say duplicate, okay, it makes a copy of that code. And if I go to the cat and click on the cat, the cat receives a copy of that same code. So the same thing will happen to the cat. Okay, I'll run a test on that. Okay, I'll, I'll start our game again. And now, hopefully, we won't go into the minuses. We'll just go down to zero lives. Three. Okay, so we're waiting for zero. And we all disappear. Okay, very good.
Next thing we want to happen is a program on the stage. So we want the stage to receive a broadcast. So we'll go to the stage area here. And when I receive the broadcast, game over. What happens to the stage? Game over. Game over should come up on the screen. So to do that, I'm going to go into the backgrounds area here. Okay. See the way it says party room there at the moment. We'll just change the name of that to game on. Okay. And I'm going to take a copy of that screen. And I'm going to rename it game over. Actually, just... Just to eliminate confusion, because we already have a broadcast called Game Over, don't we? To eliminate any confusion, I'm going to call this Game On Screen, or Game On Stage even. And I'm going to call this Game Over Stage, okay? That's just to differentiate between the broadcast, which I had called Game Over as well. Okay? It eliminates that confusion. So I have a Game On Stage and a Game Over Stage, which look exactly the same. So I'm just going to put a basic edit in here. I'm going to click on the text button. And I'll write what text color would look good on that background. Could have been blue, I'd say. And I'll click in here with my text. And I should type game over. That looks horrible. <laughs> so I'll put it on my, I'll see, can I drag that? Yeah, I'll put it on my whiteboard here. Game over, okay? So we'll click OK. So that's simple bit of code here now when I receive game over under the looks block you can see for the background there's a different set of commands for a background where instead of saying switch in costume it says switch background okay so I'm going to say switch the background to the game over stage okay let's test this I'll click my green flag what's the problem now I'll click my green flag First thing we do notice is that the game over stage is now stuck on the game uh, when we try and restart our game. So uh, when we restart our game, of course, the control to start our game is green flag. And all we need to do is, in the looks area here, remember I said for a stage you get to switch the background as opposed to switching the co costume, and I'm going to switch to the game on stage. So now let's click the green flag and you can see the game over stage disappears and the game on stage reappears. My cat and mouse still aren't reappearing when I hit the green flag. So I need to go into the cat and the mouse and snap in a command <coughs> right there that's opposite the show, or the hide command is the show command to re-show them. So right there above the forever loop, once you click that green flag, it'll show the cat. He's back. And now I also want to show the mouse. So right where I have a green flag for the mouse, I'll scroll down on the looks area block palette and click on the show command. So we're back in action. Two. And game over. Okay. We have a problem there, don't we? Can't we see the two boys are still working away in the background, aren't they? So at this stage, another useful thing to do would be probably if you could, there's a stop script buttons there, but for the time being, I'll show you a handy way. When the game is over, what you can do is you can go to the variables here and when the broadcast is, is sent out for game over, you can just snap on a command there after hiding the mouse. You can also hide the variable lives at the end of the game so you don't even see the lives displayed. The game is over and they've disappeared. Uh, what do I have to do then? Because I've done that. I've hidden the lives at the end of the game. What? Yeah, you have to show them again. So again, I'll just make sure that I show the variable lives and I snap that in with the green flag. And again, it's always a good idea to clean up your code, uh, spend a little time to comment those long blocks of code as well, and if you've made modifications, then put a comment in as well. So I'll just test it live there, to see how we're going. Green flag. Okay, game over. That's it.